Here we have an object that's resting on the ground, and somebody's pulling it on a rope that's at an angle of 20 degrees with the horizontal. And uh, it's moving with constant speed and no friction. And the question is, find the tension in the rope. <coughs> Well, we'll work this out together. So any suggestions about how we should go about this? So first we should figure out the weight. We want to identify all the forces on the object. So one force is the weight. And what direction is that in? Down. Down. How would we calculate the weight? Mg five times five negative if we are saying that it would be. And if we choose down. these as our positive directions, that'll come out to be negative 49 newtons. What are the other forces on this object besides the weight? The, the rope. normal force. The rope and the normal force. We haven't talked about the normal force together, but I guess you heard about it in class. Um, there must be, anytime you put an object on a surface, the, the surface will resist objects just trying to move through them. So the gravity is trying to move this down through the surface of, I guess we call this a table. So there must be some normal force that's opposing the weight. And then we have the rope. What direction is the rope force in, pushing or pulling? Pulling. So that's pulling in this direction. And there's nothing else that's touching the object. So there can't be any, any other forces. There's the weight and what's touching the object. So these are the only forces. Now, um, what seems more important here? What should we focus on, the x or the y components? Yeah. Turns out we should focus on the x components. So I'm going to write net force x equals max. Remember, this is our framework. So we start by writing this equation. Net force x equals max. And what should I write down as the x forces? The x component of this tension. Yeah. We can call that T sub x. Are there any other x forces? <coughs> and the answer is. The y direction, right? So there's no other x forces, because right. these only have y components. That's one reason why it's good to focus on the x component here, because it's going to be simpler. <laughs> now, how can we figure out the x component here? Well, we can't get a number for this, but we can get an expression in terms of t. What would Tx be in terms of T? Cosine Should we use the cosine of the sine? Cosine. Yeah, so if we write a little triangle here, here's T. Here's T sub x and here's T sub y. Well, T sub x is adjacent to the 20. So T sub x should be based on T times the cosine of 20. And well, this component be positive or negative? Because it's pointing to the right. So I'll go ahead and put in a positive sign here. That lets us put this angle in. What can I plug in on the right hand side? Um, Do we use the mass of the object for this? Do we? Do we need it? What, what, what happens to the right hand side here? It turns out to be zero. Because? Constant speed. Again, we have this information that we're moving. So actually, I, uh, this problem would have been cooler. I didn't make this problem as cool. I could have uh, not put any mass in at all. And we could still, notice that you don't need to know this mass if the side is going to come out to be zero. Oftentimes, that messes students up on the homework. They can spend half an hour looking for the mass, when if they just went on to the acceleration, they would realize they don't need it. So we can just plug in zero over here. Well, if we had an acceleration, then would we use the mass of the object as the mass? Or would we use yeah. the mass? We use the mass of the object. That's right. This isn't coming out the way I wanted it to, though. Ah, this kind of came out kind of dumb. <laughs> kind of dumb. All right, so what's the tension? Zero. Yeah. That's kind of dumb. So we didn't even have to break this into components. Um, so if you're moving with zero acceleration again, there can't be any net force in the x direction. All right, that, that was dumb. Let me uh, put in something else here. Let's say that somebody over here is pulling um, over here, there's a person pulling over here with 20 newtons of force. How would that change our equation here? Well, now there's another x force. So I'm going to put this in over here as negative 20. One of the biggest mistakes that people make 
if they don't put in the right signs in the net force. Make sure when you're doing next week's homework, when you're calculating net force, make sure that you figure out which of the components are positive and which are negative. Well, this is pulling in this direction, so it would be negative 20. All right, now we're going to have some tension. All right, so how would we calculate the tension now? Well, the tension would be 20. Right. Which comes out to be 21.3 newtons. Okay, this is already a kind of typical type of problem, a little bit simple, uh, but this is starting to build up the techniques. So I wanted to show you here, again, the importance of breaking things into components. What would be the biggest mistake people would make here? Well, a very common mistake would be, gee, the tension must be 20 newtons to cancel out this 20 newtons. But that's wrong because it's only the x component of this tension. Um, oh, so I guess we're, uh, oh yeah, but uh, here, so we've actually, we know that the x component is 20 newtons, but then we were able to use trigonometry to figure out the overall tension. So again, the key thing here is to think in terms of components and break things into components. Um, and one thing that would give a lot of people trouble here is because they don't know the tension, they don't like writing this down. People don't like using trig unless they know all the variables. But you've got to be comfortable um, <laughs> writing down algebraic expressions with variables. Even though we don't know what the tension is, it's still a lot more helpful to say that this is t times cosine of 20, not just say that it's the, the, the x component of the tension. Note that on this particular problem, we never needed to know the normal force. And we never even needed the weight. Because again, I said about a kind of a simple problem. Again, a more complicated problem is you're likely to need both the x and the y components, like on the two-dimensional projectile motion problem that we did. Uh, and then you wouldn't need the mass if, if you have to find the weight. You need the mass to find the weight here. Generally, is the normal force equal to the weight? Like, yeah, I wish we had more time to talk about that. Um, if those are the only two y forces, and if you're not moving in the y direction, then they tend to be equal. But in this case, the normal force does not have to cancel the weight because it's getting help from the rope. So in this case, the normal force will be less than the weight. In this case, the normal force plus the y component of the tension is going to cancel out the weight. So that's a common mistake. When people first start doing these problems, on the early problems, the normal force is always equal to the weight. And then people get the mistaken idea that the normal force is equal to the weight in complicated problems. Uh, but that's not the case. The only way to figure out what the normal force is, is to write down Newton's second law and work out all the y components. So have to equal all of the y components working in the down direction. That's right. That would equal the net force. So the net force plus the y component of the tension has to cancel out the weight in this case. So that would be a good problem here. They might have asked us for the normal force. And then we could work that out. In fact, I'll just go ahead and write that down. So here, the normal force has to cancel out the tension. And what's the y component of the rope force here? Sine. <coughs> it would be this 21.3 times the sine of 20. And should it be positive or negative? Positive, because we know that the rope is pointing up. And what should a sub y be? Now remember, we never plug in 9.8 for A. Because we're not moving yeah. vertically, right? We're moving horizontally, but we're not moving vertically, right? This is just resting vertically on the table. So this would be 0. And now we have one, vari one equation and one unknown. And we can just solve for N. And it'll be 49 minus 21.3 sine 20. 49 minus 21.3. So 40. Where is the 1.7 newtons. It's too bad that N stands for normal force and for newtons. But anyway, the normal force here would be 41.7 newtons, which is not the same as the weight. Why is the normal force less than the weight here? Because it's getting extra help from the rope. If we put the uh, tension force from the rope together with the weight, that's uh, together with the normal force, that's enough to cancel out the weight. Again, this shows the importance of breaking things into components. A lazy person would just plug in 21.3 here. They wouldn't think that they actually have to break the rope force into components before we can plug it into the y equation. So uh, you guys wanted to talk about ropes a little bit. So the key thing is break the rope force into components, put the x component in the x equation, and the y component in the y equation. <coughs>